<laughs> Dear Dr. Adam, oh, that feels great to say. <laughs> Congratulations today. Rutger and I are very proud of you, and you should feel thrilled with what you've accomplished um, with your thesis and with the defense as well. You started your dissertation process with our American Psychological Gaming paper, a mammoth first undertaking for a starting PhD student. You pour tremendous amount of time and thought into compiling a comprehensive summary of studies showing the benefits of playing video games. In the process, your critical thinking skills were honed and you brought a wealth of your own gaming experience to that paper. In only three years, it's fast becoming the most cited article of my career. And I think this is because the paper was not only academically rigorous, you made sure it was also relevant to more than the scientific community, taking Rutger and I past our Pac-Man and Asteroids references to the contemporary world of gaming where the article continues to be accessible also to game designers, uh, parents, and youth themselves. I learned a tremendous amount about the real world of gaming from that collaboration. Any of you who aren't familiar with the differences between hack and slash and horror games, um, you can see Adam after this ceremony where he can, and he's, as he's done countless times before, regale you for three hours the summary of the genres and their existential meanings. <laughs> you also made writing that paper really fun. I remember the summer work week evenings in France, revising that manuscript side by side. Many people blast their favorite music when writing and editing. You are the only one who um, actually dances with twirls and all when editing a paper, when actively editing a paper. After the gaming review, uh, you do dove into field work with your three-year longitudinal study. You tirelessly schlepped from one end of the country to the other, um, visiting the majority of families yourself, talking with parents and children in Dutch, no less, and learning firsthand where video games fit into these young people's lives. That study will make an important contribution to this field, I have to keep telling you that. No other study has looked at such young children growing up digitally during this technological transition phase and followed them over this extended time. Your data reflected a nuanced perspective. In general, you found very little evidence for negative socio-emotional impact um, that much of the public is concerned about, but you also didn't find straightforward positive associations across the board. In your discussion, you do a beautiful job of diving deeper into this complexity. I know how hard you worked on that section, laying out a truly inspiring set of next steps for future game design and research, even with the knowledge that Rutger and I would end up cutting at least half of that. I genuinely hope you find a more public home for that uh, original roadmap, because a new generation of developmental researchers, as well as applied game desires, designers, would benefit enormously. I can't talk about your PhD career without mentioning your teaching and presentation skills. I'd like to say you're a natural born public speaker, but that would undermine how incredibly hard you work at it. Adam's a passionate speaker, lighting up a classroom and inspiring students to learn with the same kind of joy that he teaches. Your master's students adored you and learned a tremendous amount from your feedback and patience. As for your public talks, whoa, <laughs> sometimes you uh, spent weeks of enormous effort uh, in procrastinating or maybe in working on those talks. Um, but I also think it's not just about procrastination, what you did in terms of uh, creating these captivating pr uh, presentations. It's an important part of who you are and what turns you on about academic work. Um, and no, it's not just about being the love of center of attention. It's that these talks are about you uh, moving and having a tangible impact on your audience. And I think that that's really important to keep in mind. Your most potent academic experiences are those that connect you to others and make you feel like you've moved them. I hope you listen to that internal gauge and search out those contexts in which you feel this creative impact because those are the work spaces you will thrive and make a real difference. There's also no way I can send you off without acknowledging your founding role in the GEM Lab, our games lab. Um, as you were so fond of telling people, you were my first PhD student on games, and your faith from the very start in where our research would take us still moves me. You've also been our biggest advocate and my first line of networking support, barreling through my antisocial tendencies and pushing me uh, to talk with exceptional people that it can could inform, support, and extend our gaming work. I can't tell you how many emails I've received over the years that started, 
Dear Professor Granick, I got your name from Adam Lobel. <laughs> Adam was a huge support to our whole research group and beyond, often working equally hard on colleagues' projects as his own. He's helped develop and test games that didn't directly get included in his thesis, including Mindlight, jo uh, Dojo, and his continued work with Deep. And of course, his work with Nevermind, the Nevermind team in Los Angeles and beyond was evidence of how multidisciplinary his work is and will continue to be. Um, Adam has generally collaborated with an extraordinary network of international scholars and de designers, many of whom are here today and from around the globe. Adam's capacities are indisputable, but the manner in which those ca uh, capacities manifest are quite singular. This last summer, just as I was sinking into a luxuriously offline summer holiday in Provence, I got an email from Andrea Samson, his current postdoc supervisor in Geneva, University of Geneva. She was asking for basically a quick email recommendation of Adam. Um, so I immediately responded, no, just call me. I need to talk to you about him. I, 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 I need to talk. Because, of course, he was going to go to Switzerland. And Switzerland is full of Swiss people. And Adam's Adam <laughs> going to Switzerland. <laughs> so there were a few contradictions. I needed to make sure she understood. On the one hand, he's brash and overconfident, letting his freak flag fly at every opportunity, taking incessant selfies beyond, before anyone knew what that word meant. But he can be equally humble, often expressing sincere insecurities about the research contributions to the field that he's been making. And he's envi enviably quick to admit mistakes and to correct them. At times, he seems to thwart authority at every turn, and yet he's downright deferential to those he respects. From the outside, he can look like the big rebel and free spirit, but he also insists on holding to traditional Jewish rituals and is likely to regale you with the importance of Talmudic dis uh, dispositions. He's seemingly oblivious to others' perceptions of him, not caring what others may think of how he dresses or whether he dresses at all. <laughs> Or how he sounds, attempting to speak French in the most hideous accent at undignified volumes. <laughs> but on the other hand, he shows deep empath empathy and sensitivity. I've never seen him say no when someone's asked him for help. And the acknowledgement section of his dissertation is longer than most manuscripts, so, you know. The man knows how to be grateful. He's an ardent self-promoter, posting loads of pictures and videos of himself across the interwebs, but he's just as likely to tweet and cheer for his friends and colleagues' uh, accomplishments. And he can spend hours tweaking with photos of himself, getting just the right shot at just the right angle with just the right Photoshop highlights to make him look fabulous. But many of us, including myself, have been struck by the equal hit care he takes with photos of other people beautiful portrait close-ups of his friends and family that show his delight and fascination with capturing human grace in its various forms. The bottom line is, attested to by the fact that new colleagues from Geneva are here and that made the trip to Nijmegen for this defense, Adam is indeed one of a kind in mind and heart, and he stands to make an important contribution. My kids are in the audience for a reason. We all grew to care for him as a person, as well as respect him as a researcher. <laughs> I also want to congratulate your parents and your whole family. Uh, I can't wait to celebrate with you guys tonight. And although we already miss you here at Radboud, we can't wait to see what you're up to next, Adam. Congratulations. Thank you.